because you've seen uh, the kind of situation there has been since Sunday when uh, Nyoro was at uh, an interview at Inoro uh, TV and thereafter he had to spend some time at the offices of Royal Media Services because he could not leave. He was afraid that he was going to be arrested but ultimately he was arrested yesterday. We do not know the status of uh, uh, where he is currently. He had been expected to be moved to Kamukunji Police Station but that didn't happen. Uh, there were reports that uh, he had been taken to Makui Police Station but as we speak now uh, we do not know his exact location but we expect that he'll be Reigned in as far as um, uh, facing whatever charges that the police may prefer. We have seen a statement from the police saying that uh, the e events at uh, the Gitui Catholic Church were uh, regrettable. Uh, but uh, I just want us to begin the conversation and say, so a member of parliament um, is involved in such chaos. First of all, why would that happen at a church event where uh, there are claims that uh, someone was not invited then they go and engage in a fight because they belong to different camps of the Jubilee Party? Exactly what is happening and why aren't, aren't politicians able to be the example that they need to be to the society? Um, well, I don't think it's uh, necessary really that somebody be invited to a function. Uh, so if he was not invited and it's a church function and is the area member of parliament, he has every right to go there. Mm -hmm. But uh, having gone there, then he has to behave with the decorum because that was not his function and even if he wanted to you know uh, exert his uh, presence mm -hmm. it has to be in a civil manner especially in a church mm -hmm. but even having said so I have been in my own constituency where people have said you know we don't want uh, politics we only acknowledge you and I sit and go on with my life mm -hmm. so it's not a matter of life and death for you to be uh, acknowledged uh, uh, even as an MP if you're there mm -hmm. so one of the things I can say is indeed the events were regrettable especially mm. in a church right and i would encourage my own colleagues that even when we want to to continue with our usual bad manners at least let's uh, leave them outside there mm -hmm. uh, of church uh, it's 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 very very unfortunate it's regrettable and unfortunately since i wasn't there mm -hmm. i can't say who is right who is wrong i can right. only make a, 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 you know a, a deduce what happened from what I've read and what I've seen, mm -hmm. and uh, I think whoever was involved in that, uh, in the fracas, it was unfortunate. But having said that, mm -hmm. uh, I want to say that um, uh, I'm glad he's now born again, uh, <laughs> speaking the same language we have spoken for years. And I'd want to say that even when he's being... Uh, well, this senior is born again now. He is born again because of the way he's speaking. We have consistently, as a party, spoken uh, for the rule of law mm -hmm. and uh, say that people must be treated fairly and our police must respect uh, everybody's human rights. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to him and I'm like, did I die and I'm now in heaven and this is an I'm watching things from another planet or what? Because I can't believe that was Didi Nyoro speaking like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I would want to encourage our politicians that be pushed and inspired by ideology. Mm -hmm. You never go wrong. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping even now that he has some ideology he's anchoring his passion mm -hmm. on. Because if he has not, then he's still getting it wrong. Right. Yeah, because if you're anchoring uh, your excitement over uh, uh, moments uh, or, uh, you know, then it, it doesn't, or over inducements, mm. then it doesn't help you. But if you are anchoring it on ideology, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, even before we went on air, I was actually saying here that we've been consistent on an ideology, on a philosophy of respect for the rule of law and human rights. That never changes. Okay. So I will defend the Nyoro's rights to be treated fairly. Mm -hmm. yes. But Daisy, remember back in 2017, Dindi Nyori himself had called for a dictatorship approach here in Kenya. Is this karma? Is this what we are seeing, this coming back all the way, given also the fact that um, he not only called for dictatorship at that time, but a stop on the constitution as well? Is this him com his own words coming back to bite him two years down the line? Well, obviously, it is his words coming back to bite him. And this is where, and I want to agree with the Honorable Millie, 
that um, leaders must be very careful in the things that they call for. Because in calling for a dictatorship, mm -hmm. you have to be willing to have that dictator dictatorship exercised against you by somebody mm -hmm. who either your, your, your opponent mm -hmm. or your enemy. So, you know, you are calling for it because you feel that the status quo favors you. And at yes. that time, the status quo favored him. And of course, the law or the, the enforcement of the law was being applied in a partisan manner. Mm -hmm. Whereas on the other side, as Millie says, that, you know, they were saying that the fair application, because we saw mm -hmm. what happened in 2016, 2017, how opposition mm -hmm. were treated. Mm -hmm. We saw the kind of drama, members of parliament being waited for outside studios. Uh, you, you heard Millie's account of even how her own vehicle was shot at, mm -hmm. you know. And I think that this is where we need to begin to ask questions as Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Is the law applicable only when you are favoring one side, you know, or when you favor status quo? And this is where the questions must be asked to the Inspector General of Police, because he's not supposed to be moved by political arm. He is supposed to be moved by the rule of law, mm -hmm. so that it is not um, because uh, a certain member of parliament right now certainly doesn't favor status quo therefore the law must be applied because we saw several members of parliament uh, during the election time mm -hmm. who at, were members of the administration breaking the law in the full glare of the police and nothing was done to them it, we have seen recently, yes, and I'm not justifying, I'm not saying that what uh, Dindi Nyoro has done is correct, right. but just recently we saw another member of parliament, mm -hmm. member of parliament for, from Nyeri, disrupt an event where a cabinet secretary was, was addressing the people, disrupt with goons, yet... We didn't Do you mind see. naming the said member of parliament? Well, I'm sure you can get into your clips and see which member of parliament I'm speaking of. But we have seen it happening. Mm -hmm. It happened in Central. Mm -hmm. They descended upon an event with goons, but we didn't see that member of parliament mm -hmm. uh, 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 being arrested or mm -hmm. or even his arrest being called for. Right. You know, so 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 it is true that. Today, Din Dinyoro is on the right side of the law, but because the law is being applied unfairly to him, mm -hmm. the same thing that he was calling for for other members is now happening. I, I find that so, interesting so, that so, he should so, say that. So, um, members of parliament and leaders, okay. first of all, there is no place for this kind of hooliganism. Okay. That, that must be stated. Because, on the one hand, if uh, members are coming to their constituency because I imagine if I go to Honorable uh, Millie's constituency and I'm trying to sideline her, mm -hmm. she would have something to say about that, you oh, know. Oh, oh, right. but although it should not be done in a manner as mm -hmm. to suggest that uh, you know who legalism is is encouraged, but I think that we must also understand that what we are seeing is politics at play. Okay. All right. Uh, I find that interesting that you should, is, you should say that uh, Din Dinero is being uh, treated unfairly. And I want to pick it from where the... I'm not saying that he's being treated unfairly. Mm -hmm. I do think that the police should, even when members of parliament behave in a disorderly manner, okay. they should actually be brought to account. Uh -huh. That must happen. But it must happen at all times. Okay. It shouldn't be applied to one side because this side favors status quo. So when they run a mock, mm -hmm. they allow to run amok the way we have seen okay you know and when uh, the others who apparently have somehow fallen out of favor then suddenly the law is applied to them what i'm saying is that there must be fair application of the law at all times whether members of parliament mm -hmm. whether citizens mm -hmm. if they are behaving in uh, as like hooligans mm -hmm. disrupting okay. uh, you know uh, um uh, events, events mm -hmm. they should be dealt with. Right. You know? right. let, but it shouldn't let's be that in. one side is allowed to disrupt and get away with it, mm -hmm. and the other side, when they disrupt, then the, a very strong arm of the law comes upon them. Mm -hmm. let, let, let's speak to Senator. Maybe can, I, can I just say just something? Before you do, let's allow her to weigh in on this. It's Senator Judith Pareno. So we see Kimani Shung and uh, Kipchumba Murukumen as well as Oscar Sudi going to Kamukunji police station and saying that um, uh, Ndindu Inyoro is being targeted because of his dalliance with the presidential ambition of uh, Deputy President William Ruto. Uh, exactly how are politicians supposed to be treated? We saw Alice Ohome say that before you arrest a member of parliament, you need to write to the speaker. I don't know whether that is true. How are politicians supposed to be treated, especially those are, that are elected? For me, I don't think that um, the law should be... Um, uh, sh the law is, 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 is law for everybody. Mm. So it should be the rule of law. It's whether you're a politician or not. Uh, if you go to a function, 
the, suppose it was just an ordinary man going to that function and disrupting. Mm -hmm. The same thing would have happened. So for me, I think it is a no for a politician to just go, even if it is in your constituency, and you go and interrupt a, um, a function that is going on, I don't think that is right. Mm -hmm. The fact that you're a politician does not give you a right to disrupt. So right. for me, while he has his rights once he's arrested, and he can be bonded out if he's bonded out, mm -hmm. he doesn't have the right just because you're a politician to interfere in an activity that is going on in your, in your constituency. So I cannot say that politicians should be treated differently from every other monainchi when the it issue comes to the application arrest. of the law. Mm -hmm. The issue of Alice Wahome's comment. Yeah, for Alice Wahome, I don't know where she's getting that law because to me, I know the constitution of Kenya treats us equally, mm -hmm. right. whether you're a politician or not, mm -hmm. whether you're a woman or whoever you are. Mm -hmm. In fact, to me, there's nobody who is above the law. Mm -hmm. all right. So they should all be uh, abided by the law. And right. I'm not saying that he cannot uh, go to functions in his constituency, but he should, he should, in fact, he should be invited. If it were me, I would not stop anybody's function in my, in my constituency. I would allow them to go on freely. All right. And Horrible Mili, you wanted to say something, but as you do that, I want to read an excerpt of the statement that was issued by the Bishop of Moranga Diocese, that is um, uh, Maria Wainaina, and uh, that is to do with, um, it is now quite clear to us that church leaders and to most people concerned about respect and honor of the ministry given uh, by the church, that many politicians think differently about the value of gatherings of Christians. Mm. For many, such gatherings are taken conveniently as platforms for self-interest and self-proposition in elective positions. I feel that this incident was a strong confirmation of the reasons to limit time and pace offered to politicians. Of course, now uh, he's reacting to what has happened at Gitui, and he appears to have been observing different incidences or other incidents. Uh, so, uh, as a politician who obviously you would want to attend, touch, and uh, I mean, speak to your constituents when you do, how then do you balance between your political ambitions and the value of a church gathering? That's up to the church. That's really? really not up to yes. That's not up to politicians. But we I can give you. I can give you. I've, I've I've been a member of two churches, uh, Nairobi Pentecostal Church. I was a member at one point. I don't know whether they've changed the practice, but Nairobi Pentecostal Church Moi used to be a regular attendee, mm -hmm. and every time that he went, he was never given chance to speak. Mm -hmm. A whole president when he was a president of Kenya. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Secondly, offers were made to him, but he's no, no, no. He was no offers were made to him. That was the policy of NPC mm -hmm. when we had Pastor Dennis White, mm -hmm. and uh, even shortly after. Mm -hmm. And I have been uh, after that a member of the Seventh Day Adventist Church, mm -hmm. and I can tell you it's unfortunate that they have their own internal politics now, especially at Maxwell. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the longest time, the Seventh Day Adventist Church does not has not allowed politics. Mm -hmm. Even even when I go to my constituencies, a lot of times they just say we acknowledge the presence of Moshe. Mm -hmm. And you worship and go your way. But they don't give you the platform. So really the church should not lament. The church has encouraged this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it is up to the church to put uh, the so house should, back to order. So should the church then stop? It is the church. It is not politicians. Mm -hmm. and there is no way that the church should mm -hmm. be pushing this back to politicians. Mm -hmm. Politicians don't force themselves to speak. If the church, for instance, if the politicians went, like in this instance, I'm told there was a fundraiser. Right. In fact, I was actually invited for that fundraiser. It's just that I wasn't able to go. Mm -hmm. So assuming uh, you, you've been invited for an event. Is it, and it, is it, is it that you saw it coming? Pardon? <laughs> is it that you saw it coming? No, no, no. Coming? I didn't see it coming. I just had other engagement. Okay. Uh, but uh, even if I was there, it's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Because if you are in a situation where... <laughs> Uh, you're giving a platform to politicians, right. then they expect that. Mm -hmm. So the church must rethink about they are engaging, the way they are engaging with politicians. Mm -hmm. But having said that, the, the, the issue I wanted to speak to was that you had indicated, what, what Daisy had indicated earlier, uh, uh, the issue of uh, uh, double standards in the application of law. And I do not encourage any double standard in the application of law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But so having come in later, I noticed that uh, what uh, presumably what he will be charged with is um, uh, assaulting mm -hmm. uh, a, police a police officer. officer. Mm -hmm. And if indeed he assaulted a police officer mm -hmm. and the Nyeri member of parliament you are talking about also assaulted a police officer, mm -hmm. then the both of them should uh, be arrested. Right. So I really, so it's, it's a case here. of... Uh, <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm a lawyer, so I use... Certain. 
that, I, that I use my said. words. I, I use my words very carefully. I mm -hmm. said allegedly. allegedly. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm right. a lawyer. Okay, let's bring yes. in Honourable Priscilla Nyokabe. It's good to have you with us this morning. She's the Commissioner with the National Gender Equality Commission. You found us in the middle of discussion of the current arrest and drama around Member of Parliament for Kiharu Dindi Nyoro. Just to rope you into the conversation, um, the internet, should I say, reminded us of a very specific clip during a special Senate sitting that Honourable James Orengo talked about, talked in rather, and he said that one day the government will come to eat its own. Is this, is this it? No, I don't think the government is eating its own. Mm -hmm. I just think that there must be a bit of order. And when chaos come out in church or, you know, fracas and something like that, mm -hmm. it's way too early for the, for, the, for the very heated campaign processes. So just a bit of order. I don't think this is what uh, James Orengo meant, that the government will eat its own people. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing is that uh, the rules should be enforced standard. I see that the Catholic Church has already responded. The bishop has already said that there won't be uh, political activities in church. I just think that a bit of... Uh, decorum in terms of how we manage ourselves in church is what is required. Mm -hmm. uh, once you have a platform to share your views, I think just do exactly that. It is a matter for debate. I don't think you need to fight anyone. Just give your views and let the other person give their own views. I think that tolerance, political tolerance is what we're going to need increasingly. I allow her to give her views and I have a chance to give my own views. Mm -hmm. And then the public and the congregation can decide who between us is the right person mm -hmm. to follow. But there shouldn't be altercations or any fights between members. Commissioner, you said that it's too early for politicking. I find that quite telling, bearing in mind that um, uh, the leaders are lied to Dini Nyoro. Wow. Finally, he is allied to someone. Mm -hmm. uh, some people lied to him. And they say that uh, they fear that this is because of his time, the ambition of Deputy President William Ruto. I mean, why would you say that? Is it just a confirmation of what their fears are? I don't think so because I personally think that if people are coming to your constituency as was happening in Kiharu, allow them. You are the member of parliament for the area. You will have a lot of time with the same people to be left to explain to them mm -hmm. whatever it is you want to explain to them, including your political affiliation. There is really no reason. There is no reason for two groups at this point in time to meet in the same church. Mm -hmm. The church will be available next Sunday. You can come back and tell them what you want to tell them. So that's the sense in which we say it's a bit too early for that very heated, competitive, uh, political campaigning, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, three years away before the next election. I think what we should have now, and mm -hmm. which is what we have accepted in our politics, is the role of church mm -hmm. uh, in leadership and the role of church in politics and the role of uh, development uh, harambe is like what we've always had uh, from the past. Okay. And maybe a, a question that we probably need to go back into is whether leaders should be participating in harambe's at all. Mm -hmm. uh, that is where the law ought to go. That in between uh, the electoral cycle, uh, we don't have a lot of uh, political uh, campaigning in churches and especially uh, those Harambees. Remember, they are related to corruption, they are related to many other things uh, after that. So this is just a symptom that mm -hmm. we are dealing with. Otherwise, the decay is on many on right. many fronts. This is like a, it's like a tool with a cavity. By mm -hmm. the time you see the cavity, uh, there's a bit of decay going on in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right, and I want us to transition to the next topic, and I want us to look at um, the political party democracy. We understand that at uh, the Kibra uh, by-election, if you look at uh, what page was that, uh, that is page 7 of the standard, you'll see the seven clear to run in Kibra uh, by-election. And um, just to highlight some of the names, we have uh, ODM's Bernard Okoth, we have ANC's <laughs> Ilir Walo, uh, for Kenya engineer Hamisi Butichi, uh, Jubilee, they have uh, McDonald Mariga, Frida Kerubo is an independent candidate, Hamida Mala is United Green Movement and editor Ocheng is from the Ukweli Party. Those are how many? Those are actually seven candidates that have been cleared to run in this election. And I want us to globalize this and talk about the political party democracy. And first of all, what was your experience, Senator Judith Paran? Of course, um, there was a pretty quite of a suspicion before the by-election, I mean the uh, primaries in Kibra constituency. What was your experience, bearing in mind that we had, we had a lot of complaints of late opening of uh, polling stations and some names not available in the register, mix-up of names. What was the experience of the chairperson of the National Elections Board of ODM? Uh, I want to say that um, with all that I've gone through as a chairperson of the election board of ODM, mm -hmm. this was one such great experience for me. We had um, a very uh, smooth exercise, mm -hmm. uh, no violence, no other instances other than one issue of a register where they say that um, you, you, you uh, some of them were missing. We were able to later on provide uh, registers, uh, mm -hmm. noting that Orange was just next to Kibra. I was able to just provide what they needed. We used all the IBC uh, gazetted polling stations, 180 polling stations. Mm -hmm. We had security for the first time in each 
each and every polling station. Mm -hmm. I've done elections in this party for so long. But this time we had such great security and not too much of it, but just enough for us to be able to do our exercise. Right. Uh, this is the first time I have received a lot of uh, congratulatory messages. But I know this is, this is what we want. Thank you so much. I couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. But I want to say that we spent so much time preparing for it. We had uh, like two weeks to prepare. We, at the first time we had to uh, postpone it because we could not do alongside the census. Mm -hmm. And we had an engagement with the candidates and agreed on the rules of engagement. So one lesson that we need to pick from this. First of all, we must have security at all times as we do our operations. Mm -hmm. That is very key. Secondly, we must have time to prepare for elections, if we, uh, party elections. Last time we had such a uh, bad experience because ODM, in our rules, in our constitution, we have proposed to do staggered nominations mm -hmm. so that we manage them well. But IBC just came up with a rule and said, no, you cannot stagger them. Yet, this is a political party. I gave you a timeline within which you're supposed to conclude wrote, all of them. We wrote a letter mm -hmm. in, and told them we want to start our nomination over a period of six months so that we do it right this yeah. time. That was in 2017. And we amended our rules. And they say you operate within your rules. We amended our rules to reflect that, just that. Mm -hmm. And we notified them. And they said, fine, operate within your rules. Came that day when we were starting. They actually said, no, do it within a week. Mm -hmm. And you're doing the whole country within a week. And it is ODM that has and all and the support. And what was the reasoning from country. IBC? They, I mean, they they're not sure, but you can tell us why They were just not reasonable was. enough, because why did they allow us to, to operate within our rules? Then again, you come and uh, disrupt our rules. Yet mm -hmm. this is a political party that has power and can manage their own, their own activity. So of importance to learn from this particular exercise is that we had one constituency concentrating on it, all our efforts on it, mm -hmm. and we did it right this time. Mm -hmm. So time and, and operating within the political party's uh, rules it should be something that we need to look for. Right. And that issue of security, so that then you are able to operate. Because sometimes, of course, they have always said, oh, the board open. But those that are in the field are the same ones who mess you up. Mm -hmm. They disrupt it. They kick those boxes. They, they oh, even kidnap no, supporters, kidnapped. candidates. The turning officers, the candidates and their supporters. But this time, our candidates behaved so well. Not a single issue, even a single incident, even during their campaign period. The same even during that exercise. And they called us and said, yes, this, we have this issue. Please address it. And we kept addressing okay. as we go. So okay. I want to say that uh, time and, uh, that we, the, the time that we do our exercises is, is important. Mm -hmm. And the issue of security is very important. Right. So Daisy, as an observer, looking someone who is outside looking inside, were you confident with how ODM carried their party primaries over the weekend? Is it something, have they sent a benchmark for other political parties here in Kenya? I think, um, in fact, I was congratulating uh, mm -hmm. Honorable Pereno in the waiting room mm -hmm. uh, because, like she says, everybody has been very impressed mm -hmm. by so the way the party that they've said. Absolutely. And not only that, I think we also should congratulate the candidates who were vying for the, 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 the position because they accepted the outcome. Right. Because you see, in Kenya, it has been such that when you do not win the party nomination, you allege all manner of uh, ma you know, malfeasance and mm -hmm. then people defect and you know, it causes a lot of chaos. So I think for me, that is something that we need to appreciate mm -hmm. because um, being in a political party, I don't think people understand, especially uh, with the way our parties, they are still nascent political parties, to be able to carry out such an exercise in a credible manner to the satisfaction of everybody, given the sense of entitlement. Mm -hmm. I think we need to encourage that kind of thing. And I'm hoping that even as the candidates go out into the field now, you mm -hmm. know, to mm -hmm. campaign, that we will see the same decorum, that candidates are going to respect the rule of law, they are going to respect the electoral codes of conduct, mm -hmm. and engage in such a manner as not to cause chaos. Because, you know, there's that general expectation that when elections come round, there's just general chaos. Mm -hmm. you know, laws are suspended. So I hope that we are going to see the same obtaining, you know, during the, the campaigns for the elections. Mm -hmm. All right. And Honorable Mili, of course, I remember last week when we were together, we were talking about uh, the political parties uh, register that there is, of course, there were so many challenges in um, rectifying that, which you've not responded to, but you'll get, get a I chance will. to. But I want us to focus on, you look at uh, the candidature um, in the by-election of Kibra, we have seven candidates, four of them come from political parties, of course, uh, some, of the some of them the leading parties. We have ODM, ANC, Fort Kenya, and the Jubilee. Then you have uh, Ukweli Green Party, um, I mean United Green Party and Ukweli Party. Then another one is an independent candidate. Just want us to focus on, there was the window that was opened by the new constitution that candidates can run as independents. I mean, what chances do they stand uh, against uh, the 
political parties that you may say are heavy machinery in terms of campaigning and uh, going through an election? I think the president has been said mm -hmm. in parliament there are very many independent candidates. So really it's up to you as an individual to prove that uh, you know you are worth your salt. Mm -hmm. So even if you're an independent candidate, I know it will be difficult, but then you must uh, you be standing above you know, the rest for you to be elected. Uh, even in uh, you know, my own constituency, I have one MCA who is an independent mm -hmm. uh, candidate who beat an ODM um, uh, MCA. So the trend has been set. So it's not anything new. It will be up to the person standing as an independent candidate to prove uh, their worth. Mm -hmm. Even in Turbo, we have um, the member of parliament for Turbo, beat a member of Jubilee when you know that that is uh, predominantly a Jubilee area. So it is not anything new. We have uh, in Kisumu mm -hmm. East, the mm -hmm. same. Mm -hmm. So there are very many independent uh, candidates. Uh, candidates. But I want to say that uh, I was amused, uh, of course, by the things that people were writing uh, jokingly. Of course, some people were saying, you know, give us back our party. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is what have you done uh, mm -hmm. with our party? And, uh, you, you know, if you look at so the winning. No, no, no. Uh, they were saying about the, um, uh, the way things went on uh, very calmly and everything. Mm -hmm. But even though people were saying it jokingly and uh, that uh, then the ODM has been made to look as though we never do our polls very right. correctly. Right. I said it last time I was here that, and I've been proven right, that usually the challenge is about um, parties not having uh, enough resources. Mm -hmm. And if the parties have enough resources in terms of time, in terms of security, then the nomination process will go on very well. Mm -hmm. And that is why standard nominations would be very good for parties. Right. So that the state can put all the resources and energy mm -hmm. you know, on the polls. Right. Honorable Nyokabi, I have two questions for you. Number one, if my memory serves me right, you were an independent candidate sure. back in 2017. Sure. Sure. Did you have confidence that you would, uh, back then, mm -hmm. uh, reflecting two years later, mm -hmm. would you have confidence that as an independent candidate, one can get a seat despite the fact that perhaps your opponent is coming in with um, a political party behind mm -hmm. them, financial support as well as political support? Yeah, true. I mean, being an independent candidate is climbing uphill. Mm -hmm. uh, if other people are running on, uh, you know, sort of temporary uh, ground, you, you're climbing a hill mm -hmm. and it's not easy. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I like about it is that you're free to share your own views about development, about projects, about, you know, you, you really are independent, uh, as, as it were. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's difficult. And I like that uh, women are increasingly using mm -hmm. uh, the independent candidate because, you know, strong parties would really, really, really... Uh, uh, get a very you would really be able to compete at the same level with uh, with the uh, with the male candidates right. in the strong party say with the and jubilee uh, finances usually has become a big issue but then also sometimes the name sometimes mm -hmm. just our understanding of politics mm -hmm. i mean it's very strong women like Meli or Thiambo who are on the constituency seats i think just about 24 mm -hmm. out of 290 mm -hmm. so we still have some seats to cover so this path of independent yes uh, sometimes may not win you the seat but it allows you an introduction mm -hmm. into our political into system and into the politics and into the area so right. that by the time the next election is coming, a party now mm -hmm. uh, can be able to support you as a good and, candidate. And, and speaking of area, Kibra is the biggest, is one of, is, is an ODM stronghold. Sure. Jubilee was a bit ish ish on whether they want to front a candidate. End of the, end of the day, they still fronted one, Marika. Mm -hmm. But President Huru Kenyatta hasn't been uh, so vocal in terms of uh, um, pushing for him and campaigns on the ground. Is this because he's very keen on protecting the handshake, given that Kibra is an ODM stronghold, and the fact that this has also generated a lot of heat within the Jubilee Party? I think one of the things with the president is that he is also burdened with governing the country, and we have uh, international issues to deal with, we have local issues, we've got a drought uh, coming, so I would just assume that his diary is a little bit too full uh, for, for a by-election. But once the party makes a decision, then he will decide whether he wants to get in. But ordinarily, not just this one, he hasn't mm -hmm. really been involved in by-elections before, not just the Kibra one, mm -hmm. in many of the by-elections. So it's not seen to protect the country. No, I think it's much more that he's burdened with the, the, process with the duties of keeping the country uh, <laughs> running. I mean, governing is a 24-7 is a 24/7 job. All I right. mean, even with the handshake and all, but I just suspect that he's there is a bit too but busy okay. for this. And we're hoping that the best... Just let me finish. <laughs> uh, because another thing is, uh, keep the people already elected a good member. Ken Okoth was one of the best members of parliament uh, in this country. We are hoping that they do the same uh, in this by-election, that they give themselves a, a, a really great leader for themselves, you know, okay. despite what, what other big leaders are going to be saying. Uh, uh, all right, I want us to close to this topic. We'll start with you, Daisy, just briefly. 
Um, not related to this, but I wanted to say something about political parties mm -hmm. and particularly mm -hmm. the Office of the Registrar of Political Parties. Because you know now we are looking at uh, the by-election, mm -hmm. but by and large we know that uh, political parties have had a lot of uh, internal problems, uh, members' registers, you know, because a lot of these primaries are like, uh, you know, universal suffrage. It's not necessarily members who mm -hmm. are uh, carrying out these exercises. And that is something that we must address. And we ordinarily look at IBC and focus a lot of our attention on IBC mm -hmm. and not on the Office of the Registrar of Political Parties to be able to help organize political mm -hmm. parties. Mm -hmm. um, one of the challenges that we've had in Kenya since the uh, inception of this office, of the Office, the Registrar of Political Parties, is that the holder of the office has always been in an acting capacity. You remember that Lucy Ndungu was never... Mm -hmm. uh, confirmed. Mm -hmm. The current registrar, um, Anne Derito, is still in an acting capacity. The office is very poorly resourced. I'm not certain that it is devolved, and if it is devolved, to what extent that it is able to give the necessary support okay. to political parties. So while we celebrate how the uh, elections, uh, the, by the nomination exercise has been carried out, and Honorable Pareno has talked about, you know, the security and everything, the bigger challenge comes when we are uh, at a general election stage. Mm -hmm. and we have a multiplicity of political parties. Mm -hmm. How then do the political parties organize themselves? And these are things that we need to start talking about now. Okay. So the Office of the Registrar of Political Parties really needs to be given the necessary attention, proper resourcing. We need confirmation of the registrar because at least the registrar has security of tenure. Right. And therefore we'll be able to work with the political parties to sanitize the political mm -hmm. environment okay. and make sure that political parties abide by their rules. Because this is just one exercise. Mm -hmm. We have seen when we have a big exercise and multiple parties, mm -hmm. it becomes very it's, chaotic. It's more chaotic. Uh, so, Senator Preno, as you close on this, also tell us what's, what's the challenge in having a substantive hold of the Office of the Register of Political Parties? Um, I want to say that it is, uh, in fact, the other day we had a workshop uh, with the Register of Political Parties and they called several, we were there mm -hmm. with Millie, mm -hmm. and they're saying let us take the Office of the mm -hmm. Register of Political Parties because it, it is like just there, you know, we need that to be strengthened and we are saying that we need uh, at least a uh, substantive uh, register of political parties because that is where we have all, in fact I, I am aware that we, we are not able to get uh, proper reg registers of our members most of the times as ODM we send in uh, we keep uh, putting registers of members mm -hmm. and we send and we are not able to even get, get proper at the end of the day so we, it's like we are running towards an election and we are supposed to have registers and you don't have and mm -hmm. the register is not just the register you have as a party it's the register you have mm -hmm. forwarded to the register of political parties mm -hmm. confirm that it is registered then that is what you use for your nomination. You always have challenges because that uh, that particular office is is like it's just there. Right. So there should be uh, duties, division of duties between the IBC and mm -hmm. the Registrar of Political Parties. Then uh, you talked about the handshake. I want to say that you cannot we cannot say that there is no handshake. So if the president would, uh, if, if people are saying like the president is quiet mm -hmm. and if, if that is a defect of, of the handshake, then I say that the handshake is there and we cannot ignore it. Mm -hmm. And we have some effects that come out of that handshake. W what effect do you see? I see harmony in everything. <laughs> and that yeah. includes having Marega versus Okot and the rest? Yeah, no. Um, I will not uh, talk about Mariga because I don't know how he came in. They just picked him, but I'm saying that <laughs> I see a lot of harmony in a lot of things. Okay, no, no, I'm, asking, but I, I can also I'm asking ask that because of the fact that uh, the Jubilee Party, that the party leader is uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, the president, uh, is, has a candidate in the name of MacDonald Mariga. I just don't know what role handshake would play in that. I, I don't think the handshake means that ODM dies. There will always be ODM, there will always be Jubilee, and so they will fill candidates. It only means mm -hmm. that because of the handshake, now uh, when you do uh, primaries, mm -hmm. it's done calmly. Okay. Because of the handshake, <laughs> things go smoothly, and I'm hoping that because of the handshake, mm -hmm. uh, it will be friendly fire. Okay. So that if, even if you have Mariga and our candidate, mm -hmm. that uh, there be decorum in the way we do things. Right. Okay, all right. Yes. And I want us now to, before we take a short break, we need to speak to the senator of Muranga, that is Irongo Kangata, if we have him. I understand that um, he is said to have secured the release of Kiharu MP Ndindi Nyoro after having, he, after he had been arrested ye yesterday. Uh, good morning, Senator, and you, you are live on Citizen TV. Of course, we have a panel here of Emilio Diambo, Daisy Amdani, as well as Priscilla Nyokabi and uh, Senator Judith Pareno. And we're asking the question of uh, the fate of um, Ndindi Nyoro. Do you know where he is and what happens this morning after that dramatic or chaotic situation that we saw in Moranga last night? 
Yes, I know where he is. He is at home. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are heading to Murana. Uh, but essentially, he's now a free man. We've been able to secure his unconditional release and no charges are going to be preferred against him. Mm -hmm. Did you say no charges will be preferred against him? Yes, no charges. We have been able to use our legal argument mm -hmm. to convince the him that there is no evidence at all against my friend Didi Nyoro. There is no reason to warrant his arrest and also being arraigned before a court of law. So what was that about yesterday, the chaotic scenes, including that very dramatic night on Sunday? What was that about? I mean, the police have been searching for him. They got hold of him yesterday, and uh, we even saw uh, the people of Moranga demonstrating. So what was that? Well, essentially, first allow me to do away with the event that my friend, the Nero, had gone into hiding. No, you remember, he came to the station, he gave some interview, then he went home, there was no arrest. Then yesterday he went to retreat of a very severe project and then uh, later on they were able to arrest him in public. He did not run away, he continued with his schedule. Mm -hmm. Of course now his supporters in Morana were not quite happy with that mm -hmm. and there were some chaotic things in Morana town. Mm -hmm. But then again, for me, let me say the danger is my personal friend. He was my CDF chairman when I was a member of parliament for Kearu. We did a good job. No wonder immediately I decided to go and become a senator. Mm -hmm. People say, no, we are going to vote for this chairman of PDF. You have done a good job together with him. And indeed, he was voted to become a member of parliament mm -hmm. for He has taken a certain political stance, which in my opinion, that is freedom of expression. He should not be harassed because of it. For me, let me say I'm not in that wing per se, mm -hmm. but he remains my personal friend and I will continue to tell him his rights as a lawyer. Right, and, uh, and Senator, you've mentioned that um, you two are not only political friends, but you're also friends outside of politics. Um, how does he go about explaining the chaos that happened and will he officially apologize to the church after that incident happened? Well, there is no evidence as to whether that case should be attributed to him. I would imagine that's one of the reasons the state has taken into account and mm -hmm. decided to allow him to go scot-free. So therefore, mm -hmm. the issue of apologizing, I am not so sure whether it is him who should apologize or other person who are there. Maybe that is better left to the congregants who are there yes. as to who is actually to blame for that. Uh, and Senator, you say that now he is at home. Could you confirm to us that he will be in court today morning? No, he won't go to court, but be that as it may, he may go there just to ensure everything is okay, yes. But strictly speaking, as far as what I've been told, no charges have been preferred against him, they have been okay. dropped, and therefore no need for him to go to court today. But he may go there just to ensure everything is okay. Okay, all right, thank you so much, uh, Senator Irungo Kangato, who is also an advocate of the High Court for that. And wish you well in whatever you do. Of course, we are having a statement here uh, that had been released yesterday by the police in Muranga County, that is, Police County Commander uh, Joseph Fatkinyo. He had said that uh, police were investigating the matter with a view to taking necessary legal action against the Member of Parliament mm -hmm. and the other culprits involved in the incident. We just wonder what just changed, but of course, you hear the Senator saying that um, they were able to use their legal acumen uh, to wiggle out of the situation that uh, Ndin Dinero was involved in. So we take a short break on return we'll be talking about the situation that we have a section of um, um should i call them an ngo or is it um uh, civil society saying that uh, the building bridges initiative has no place it is just a hoodwink hoodwinking kenyans one of those that said that is daisy amdani as she is in studio back in a moment